In this part of the lesson, we're going to look at how to use the else if statement to add multiple mutually exclusive conditions to the same block if. And if that didn't sound like it made much sense, don't worry, it will very, very soon. Let's start by opening up the file that I've already downloaded and extracted. And then when that's been opened, we'll click the enable content button to allow our code to run. So what we have currently is a version of the game that we were working on in the previous part of the lesson. So we've already got some code that changes the colours of player 1 and player 2 according to which cell has the higher number. I have adjusted the code ever so slightly so that we have a smaller numeric range, so we're only generating a random number between 1 and 10 for each player. And the idea behind doing that is because it makes it much more likely that we'll generate a draw. So if the numbers are the same, what I'm trying to indicate here is that player 2 has a small advantage. Here we go, here you can see. When the numbers match, player 2 is indicated as the winner. And the reason for that, if we switch into the developer tab and then the visual basic editor, we can see that our if statement checks if range b2 value is higher than or greater than range d2.value, then make player one the winner. In all of the cases, make player two the winner. We could resolve this, I suppose, by changing the condition so that it said greater than or equal to. So in this case, the problem we have is the opposite. If player two's score is either greater than player two score or the scores are equal, then player one is indicated as the winner. So that's not the right solution. What we'll do instead is we'll explicitly test whether player two's score is higher than player one's. And then under any other circumstances, we'll indicate that it was a draw. To do this, we're going to repurpose our else clause. So we add an explicit condition. So currently this code runs whenever our original if statement returns false. We want to only run this code if another explicit condition has been met. So let's change the else keyword into an else if keyword. When you do this, you must then complete the statement by writing a logical test and the word then at the end. So in fact, let's just cheat. Let's copy and paste this part of our original if statement and then paste that at the end of the else if keyword. All I'd like to do now is reverse the logical test. So let's check if D2 is greater than B2. Then we can indicate that B2 is the loser by colouring the cell in red and D2 is the winner by colouring their cell in green. And again, as in the previous video, if you'd rather use different colours uh, than green and red, I appreciate that's not always the most, uh, most sensible choice for everyone. Please feel free to change those to any other colours. So let's check that this works now by switching back into Excel and then trying to play the game again. So this time we should see that when player one score is higher, they're indicated as a winner. When player two score is higher, they're indicated as a winner. If we're lucky enough to generate another draw, um, please feel free if you're testing this, you could always alter the, uh, the rand between function to generate a smaller numeric range. But we should see that when we do generate a draw, finally there it is, we get the cells remaining in this gray color. So they're not colored in at all. Now, the great thing about using the else if statement is that you can add as many else ifs to the same block if as you like. So let's say that perhaps we wanted to check if the score is a draw, then we wanted to change the colors of these cells to some sort of neutral color. So let's switch back into the visual basic editor and to add another else if clause or another else if statement, we can do that within the same block if. So let's give myself another blank line and then write another else if. And this time, let's say range b2.value is equal to range d2.value then. I'll just alter it. It's not important, but I, I can't leave my uh, b as a lowercase b. Let's, let's make that a capital B. And then let's say we'll use the color orange to change the colors of range b2 and d2. We can actually do that in a single line. Let's say range b2, comma d2. As long as we do that within a single set of double quotes, we can then say dot interior dot color equals RGB orange. There we go. So once again, if I were to switch back to the Excel window and then test this, we can see that we still get the, uh, the winners being indicated with red and green. Um, and if we do finally get lucky enough to generate a draw again, it might be worthwhile changing the code to generate a smaller numeric range. 
uh, how many times can I play this without generating a draw before I get bored? Um, about that many times. So let's just cheat a little bit and reduce these to a much, much smaller range. Let's go between one and two. There we go. So if I switch now back into the Excel window and play a couple more times, there we go. So when there's an exact, uh, when the scores are exactly equal, we generate a draw indicated in orange. The else if statement that we've just added is actually a little redundant. If I switch back to the Visual Basic Editor, we've already explicitly tested if the value of B2 is bigger than D2, do this set of actions. And we've already explicitly tested if D2 is bigger than, D2, uh, than, than B2. So if neither of these two conditions have been met, then implicitly the values in cells B2 and D2 should be equal. If that's the case, we don't need to explicitly test for that. We can just revert to using the basic else clause. So let's remove everything after the else keyword on this line. Let's just select and then delete that code. This means that if neither of these two conditions are met, then we automatically end up in the else clause and then this statement will be executed. So let's give that a quick test. Back in Excel, we should be able to generate winners and losers fairly easily this time, and even a draw, as we're just generating numbers between two and one. There we go. So we should be able to get every variation of red and green and orange. So many draws now, I can't stop generating draws. There we go. At this point, you can either continue with the extra practice session at the bottom of this part of the lesson, or move on to the next part of the lesson entirely, which explains how to write nested if statements.